We really, really love um, that you've invited us to be here and um, really looking forward to the session. And we are going to talk people through a few slides for um, perhaps the first 20 minutes of the call or so, and then we will move to a Q&A. So if you've got a pen, keep it handy, scribble down questions or just put them straight in the chat and Ken will keep a record of them as we go through. So I thought I would just start by giving everyone a little bit of an introduction to where Chris and I are. Um, these are two photographs taken in the same week from my front door here in Flecka. And I've been here since January. Chris has been here since the beginning of the school. And I think this just goes to show the, the marvels, um, but also how rural it is here in Norway. As you can see in this session, uh, we're going to give you a bit of a walkthrough of what stands out to us about the new DP Physics Guide, that which will be first assessed in 2025. We're then going to talk about how we've produced our textbook to most help you to address everything that's in the guide. And then we are going to talk through our resources for teachers, how you can use the textbook and the ebook in front of your class, and finally, how you can continue to professionally develop in anticipation of the new guide. So I think all of us who've opened the guide will have noticed uh, the, the most noticeable thing, I think, is the themes. This is a new way of organising the course content. There are five of them. Space, time and motion. The particular nature of matter. Wave behaviour. Fields. And nuclear and quantum physics. The skills like measurements and uncertainties no longer feature in the main topic chapters, but they're still there under the tools that a physicist uses, experimental techniques, technology and mathematics. And then there's also a great deal of attention in the guide given to the inquiry process. So exploring and designing, collecting and processing data and concluding and evaluating. Chris, do you want to come in at this point? Uh, I, I would just just to say a few things. Um, it's, for me, it's not early here. Uh, I normally get up at four o'clock when I'm writing a book and, and doing stuff. So it's, this is quite late for me. Um, I, I, uh, Emma is my boss now. Uh, so I, we met at a, at a workshop some years ago, uh, and she said uh, at the end of the workshop, she said, I, wa "I want to be like you," and now she is me. So uh, that's that's uh, uh, you, it, your ambition has been met. Um, I, I, I for the past eight years, <laughs> everything I've, I've, except I've, the bouldering. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Yeah, the the the, the casting flies. By the way, for, it sounds a bit dubious, but uh, it's uh, it's fly fishing, uh, which which I can do outside my door. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Since since I had I've, I have Parkinson's, I haven't been able to. Uh, do workshops and, and stuff like that. Uh, it's it's why I, I look a bit serious. Um, they put it uh, on the video, and, and it's why I, I shake a bit. Um, to be honest, I wasn't going to write the book, uh, rewrite the book. I did write the book eventually, but uh, Emma stepped in and said she would uh, help out, and uh, she's done most of the work on the new book. I've just been sort of advising um, because I, I can't really use the, the, the keyboard very well anymore which is a problem. Um, but uh, I am actually retiring in, in about six weeks, well, sort of, um, although I still live next door to the school, so I'm not going very far. But Emma's going to do most of the, uh, well, pretty much all of this, uh, and I, I'm just going to sit here and, and listen and, uh, and be disruptive and try to crack jokes whenever possible. Um, so I, I, I hopefully haven't lost my sense of humour through Parkinson's, uh, just uh, uh, some other things. OK, so uh, I'll, I'll try to chip in whenever possible. You can see. Yeah, I'm actually, I don't normally open my curtains. Uh, it's normally a red backdrop when you, if you've seen me on webinars before, but today I, uh, there's, it's, it's uh, not so bright out there. OK, over to you. Great. Uh, so back to the physics. Um, under these five <laughs> themes, we we have uh, these topics, and um, I think 
you know, under space, time and motion, everything's quite intuitive. Um, kinematics, forces and momentum and so on. You'll notice that the option content or what was in the option of rigid body mechanics has now joined the main field for higher level students. And we also have relativity in the same way. The groupings under the particulate nature of matter, I think, are something that students and teachers are going to quite enjoy. It's quite curious to have current and circuits joining the same topic area as the greenhouse effect. Um, but equally, provided that I think teachers realise that they don't have to teach in the order of the guide, um, for example, maybe introducing electric fields before current and circuits, I think, again, it's absolutely um, fine and quite exciting and students will enjoy making the links between topics that we'll come to later on. Under waves, everything kind of makes sense. There's nothing too surprising there. I think this is the first area where we've got topics that have some higher level and some standard level content. The Doppler effect is one that we really found quite interesting to write in the textbook for reasons that I'll show. And then we have fields with induction as a higher level only concept. And then the nature of the atom, quantum physics, radioactive decay, fission, and fusion. And um, to us, certainly, it looked like an awful lot of content from uh, sort of maybe astrophysics has sort of found its way into the fusion and stars section. Um, students need to know quite a bit about the life cycle of a star. Yes, yes, there's actually quite a lot of the option content is put in. It's quite surprising, mm -hmm. particularly that the uh, relativity work. Uh, you, you can't really just put in a little bit. Uh, you have to you have to do it properly. So uh, it's uh, it's quite a lot. I would say, I would say the content has, has increased, not not gone down. Yeah, we've seen a few teachers who've done calculations of how many lessons they plan to be teaching for. Um, we certainly think it's going to be a bit more. Some have said it's about the same. I guess it just depends how long you want to spend on each thing. Um, for example, all three of Kepler's laws have now worked their way into the course under gravitational fields, and we don't feel like uh, significant amounts of content, maybe capacitors, the standard model um, have gone, but maybe aren't sufficient to replace what has come in. Also in the guide, as well as physics content, we'll find the things that relate specifically to the IB. What is this that makes it an IB diploma physics course as opposed to physics on its own? So, of course, in the guide, you'll find aims, content about the nature of science and the nature of physics. There's the learner profile. And then there's this big idea of conceptual learning. We also have approaches to learning and how the guide believes that students will develop these approaches while studying their physics course. The Group 4 project has been renamed as the Collaborative Sciences Project. The objectives are largely the same to do with knowledge, understanding, and then analysis, evaluation and synthesis, as well as having one that relates to the practical scheme of work and to the IA around the application of these skills to carry out an investigation. We have internal assessment and external assessment, and also, of course, perhaps touched upon in the guide, theory of knowledge and the extended essay. Chris, do you want to speak a bit about conceptual learning, perhaps? Hmm. Yes, OK. Uh, it's interesting that uh, the idea of non-conceptual learning in physics, uh, I, I don't see how you can do physics without doing it in a conceptual way. But uh, the, the idea is, of course, that uh, the students understand the concept of, for example, electrical current um, and don't just re remember Ohm's law of B equals IR and those horrible triangles that I really hate, um, the V on the top and the IR at the bottom, uh, to just plug in and, and try to and come up with the answer. But the questions in the IB are such that it is really uh, it's difficult for the students to, do, to use that uh, sort of plug-in approach. Um, the, the, the examiners are very try very hard to make to make them conceptual, um, and in fact, I think over the years it's become more and more like that. The, the, the last exam I think was the, the most sort of explanation type answers uh, that, that I've seen. Although I haven't really uh, done any proper calculation of that, so I may be wrong. Hmm. 
So I guess the big headline that we would like teachers to feel reassured by is that physics remains physics. If you've been teaching the IB Diploma Physics course up until now, or really any post-16 physics course, you're going to know the majority of the stuff. I know that I have to brush up on my relativity in quite a significant way. My degree is in chemical engineering, so maybe I've got an advantage in areas like the gas laws and thermodynamics. So I think all of us are going to have to work a little bit to up our knowledge of the options. But on the whole, it's so far so good. So what have we done with our textbook to maximize the way that, I guess, the ease that you will have in communicating the course? I think the first thing that we'd like to highlight is the way that we've structured it. So we, of course, as you'd expect, have an introduction. And guess what? We've gone through the guide, we've identified what it was that was important to the IB, and we've addressed them directly. So we've got sections on the nature of physics, the nature of science, what it means to learn physics. Chris has done a lot of work on this. How to use the book. And we've related this again, not just to <laughs> turn the page, read some information, try some questions, practice again. But actually, how can you use a book to help you with observing things, explaining things, using laws and solving problems? We've included a chapter on the skills. And we're actually really proud of this chapter because I've sort of done an audit of all of the skills that were mentioned in the tools section of the guide. And then I've addressed them very clearly in the skills chapter or provided a note as to the page or topic that you can go to to find that skill. And we've done this very clearly, a bullet point list so that students can almost tick off what they've done as they do it. And that's in terms of experimental techniques, technology and maths. We've, of course, then got 24 topic chapters for 24 topics. Um, I know that when I was a physics teacher of the last guide, or still am, I, to be honest, wasn't sure about Chris's book because he made a book, I think, that was great at explaining physics, but one that maybe wasn't as easy for students to know how they were doing relative to the guide. Well, in this version, we've completely addressed that concern or that question mark. So we've got everything spelled out nice and clearly. And as you can maybe see from the very small contents photograph on the right, we've actually highlighted not just on the contents page, but throughout the entire textbook, every single line that is higher level only in the combined standard and higher level book. We think that's going to be really popular and make it super easy for you to buy just one textbook for you know, all students in the class. They can use the same one. But if it's a mixed class, your higher level students will know exactly what extra they need and your standard level students will know what they can leave out. And then we've also put a lot of effort, we're quite proud of this, into our theory of knowledge, IA, exams and extended essay chapters too. Chris, maybe you want to talk a little bit about the kind of physics flow chart that we made and the nature of inquiry. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely fine. Uh, <laughs> Chris actually made this little diagram on the left um, where he talked about how it is that we kind of, that physicists actually work. You observe something. The problem is I can't, see, think... I can't, I can't see your diagrams. I can't oh, see the presentation. <laughs> so I don't know sorry. what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Chris. It's, um, it's the diagram about how we observe something. You then ponder whether you can accept explain what it is you've observed already. If yes, then that's probably because you already know some laws of physics. And if not, then maybe you don't have adequate knowledge of the laws, or maybe a law doesn't yet exist in the, the grand scheme of physics in order to explain it. So you define some quantities, you then introduce some laws based on maybe what you've observed countless times or what you'd recommend based on the theory, and then you're able to solve more problems again henceforth. So we've taken this quite beautiful diagram, I think, on the right hand side, which the IB produced about how students overall approaches to learning surround the approaches that are specific to the sciences, and then which in turn surround how it is that we conduct investigations. And we've sort of 
I think turned it into something that students will really enjoy learning about. It's sort of a lesson in epistemology. On to our resources for teachers. You know, um, I actually feel with this book like you could prepare for your lessons through reading it yourself, because within each chapter we have an overall discussion about the theme like space, time and motion. We then have what I consider to be quite a well chosen photograph to introduce the topic and a detailed caption about that photograph. The guide has guiding questions and Pearson have done a great job of getting permission from the IB to use everything that they've produced, basically. Um, it's a fully IB affiliated and collaborated with book. Um, so they've kind of given us the seal of approval. It meant that Chris and I had to go through an extra layer of checks and make final amendments. Then each chapter, of course, has an introduction, a list of the understandings that the IB have given us, and then topic content, the actual substance of the chapter with diagrams and equations and derivations. We've also included all of the linking questions. And what we've done, unlike the guide, these linking questions create bridges between topics, is we've actually given then a hint as to where you'll find the, the response to the link, the other side of it, which the guide doesn't do. We've got experiments and simulations actually baked into the book so that you could almost um, have students follow the instructions and do little else beyond the book. And then when the chapter is concluded, we return to the guiding questions and we respond to them. And if you were to read these guiding questions revisited sections together for the full book, all 24 chapters in a row, it would really, I think, tell the story of physics right the way through. We've also taken care to ensure that the chapters can be read in isolation. So you could perhaps, you know, approach the currents and circuits uh, topic if you wanted to after or before you tackle fields. It, it doesn't necessarily rely on what's come beforehand. And then we have an absolutely um, an absolute abundance of practice questions, something in the order of 100 to 150 marks worth of questions per chapter. So you've got probably two hours of of homework as a minimum that you can set per chapter. So and uh, and also the again, Pearson have done an amazing job of working with the IB to get permissions to use their past paper questions. So for those of you who are sort of wrestling with IB question bank, maybe trying to prepare your own question sets, we've done the hard work. We've gone through them. We've we literally sort of stripped off of question bank every question that could possibly have linked to the chapters as they are in the new guide. And then we've taken out the specific parts of that question that are no longer contained. We have kept the odd question that we think uh, extends students' understanding. We've also got some thought-provoking, qualitative thinking physics questions. We've got some Olympiad questions as well. We've got some questions that Chris and I have devised. Some of them will be familiar from the previous edition. Uh, most of them are new. But I think you'll, um, you'll find that pretty much 100% of the sort of consolidation and practice that you would like students to do is found literally right here in the book. I think the when I was preparing the answer and work solution pages over Christmas this year, it came to like 100 pages worth of work solutions. So and that's an extremely small font. So it just gives you a little flavor. Um, within the chapters, we also have these boxes. So um, most of these you, you will recognize in terms of the worked examples. We really liked the worked examples from the previous guide and or the previous book. Um, we've updated them though to make sure that they match and also just done extra quality checks to make sure that everything that should be in italics like variables is and everything that shouldn't be like units is not. We've got exercises for students to kind of practice little chunks of information, maybe doing some potential difference current and, uh, and resistance calculations. And we've got boxes on the nature of science, the global context in which the information becomes relevant, interesting facts, skills, theory of knowledge, key facts, like what is it from that whole page that you must remember, hints and challenges. So a couple of examples. 
uh, here's the beginning of our greenhouse effects chapter. So you can see we've got a photograph on the left and then on the right hand side, we've got our caption, the guiding questions, an introduction, which includes a nature of science books and the understandings. From the same chapter, here's a fairly typical looking explanations page. As you can see, it's quite rich with diagrams and it's quite well structured, but we also haven't shied away from showing students, you know, um, rich um, prose that they can read um, in, a, in detail. On the right hand side at the bottom, you'll also see a linking question and it relates to something in chapter C4. Also within the same chapter, we've got a, a skills box. So this actually helps students to construct a computer simulation that models elements of the greenhouse effect, as well as an exercise. And on the right hand side here, you'll see the guiding questions revisited. So the same questions are repeated. And then we have something like seven bullet points there, which summarize all of the information that students should have gained. And there are also three linking questions on this double page spread as well. This is a sample page from our practice questions. So um, you can see that we've got um, IB multiple choice questions. The multiple choice will still feature in paper one, section A, um, where section one, sorry, sorry, paper one, section B is all about data analysis. And then paper two is kind of longer answer questions. So we've been sure to include lots of multiple choice questions, and um, but also some of our own. And then I just wanted to give an example of a chapter that does have a mixture of standard and higher level material. And Doppler effect, as I mentioned, was probably the hardest one of these because the only distinction is that higher level students need to know which equations to use, whether it's moving source or moving observer where standard level students merely need to know what the diagrams look like. So we've um, sort of included in bold a discussion around this. Standard level students will notice that the wavelength and speed effects for moving sources and observers are different. Higher level students are required to calculate the frequencies in each case by carefully selecting the appropriate equation. And then more typically in the book, you'll just see a little rectangle with HL written in it, as you can see for that worked example on the right hand side. And the questions at the end of that chapter, you can see here that most of them are doable by all students. But we've got those little rectangles once more for the higher level specific sections. So we will then to how you can use this book not just for students on their own reading or for you preparing or them doing questions, but also actively as a resource in the room. I think something we're quite proud of is that, um, you know, dare I say it, you hear a lot in the kind of media and in the modern day about like decolonizing the curriculum. And this kind of starts with textbooks. And we've taken really good care, I think, to not just go with the standard kind of examples of, of all of the physics ideas. Um, and we've tried to bring things up to date to the greatest extent possible as well. So for example, we do have the Hubble deep field in the book, but we've also got the James Webb photograph from July 2022 as well. And we've used the James Webb telescope launch as an example of Newton's third law. We've got a Rube Goldberg machine. Those have become quite popular in advertising and other videos. We've got a Japanese female breakdancer. We've got the flooding that took place in South Korea and contrasted that with the extremely warm weather events happening in Western Europe at the same time. We've got the LIGO experiment rather than merely, you know, CERN as an example of what's happening in, in the modern day. Um, I had a little look for under the gravitational fields topic at where on earth has the lowest gravitational field strength. And apparently it's the summit of a mountain in Peru. We've got a mention of Sesame, which is a Middle Eastern collaboration particle physics accelerator. And we've made it, drawn attention, I guess, to other modern crazes like podcasting um, when we discuss microphones. We, we also, um, under sort of 
renewable energy, wanted to go for something that wasn't just a generic wind turbine. We've tried to find something specific. So we've gone for a power station using solar in China. And we've also done a profile on Lise Meitner, the uh, physicist who discovered vision. Also oh, in the... Oh, yeah. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Sorry. There's also a lot of humour in the book. You, you may not realise it, uh, but there's, there's a lot of jokes. There, there, there was actually more jokes in the original uh, version, but my first editor took took a lot of them out. But uh, I actually made it on uh, on, on Reddit uh, as a sort of a trending item. One of one of the comments, which was about uh, that, uh, you, if you fall on concrete, it hurts more than if you fall on a, a trampoline. And some student thought that was uh, um, worth quoting on edit as a sort of a look what I learned in physics today. But, uh, <laughs> it's probably the, the book with the most humour. <laughs> yeah, what Chris is like in the classroom. Um, on the ebook, we've uh, kept basically everything that we had in the previous um, guide, but we've updated it. We've given it a slightly more fresh appearance and the interface seems to be changing to becoming slightly more clean and attractive, I think. Uh, so we've got 10 additional labs. These are PDFs that students can download. Uh, we've got seven virtual labs as well, which use things like GeoGebra. So for, for schools that don't maybe have labs or easy access to technician support, the students can work through those labs with no equipment at all. Um, a little project that I did over uh, sort of December of last year was to go through every single simulation in FET to find those that were sort of very related to this IB physics course. And I've made sort of a mini sort of flashcard guide to each of the FET simulations. So 39 of those, so that's another 39 kind of labs that your students can do to learn the course. We have sort of significantly increased the access that we have to videos. Pearson have put a lot of money into purchasing these videos and uh, getting the permissions for us to use them. And we've explained them this time around as well. We also have an annotated IA and we've uh, considered in detail how it relates to the new criteria, these equal splits of research design and concluding and evaluating. Uh, we've got practice questions for paper one, section B, that's the data and stuff. We, you know, although it doesn't have its a, a typical topic chapter because measurements and uncertainties, as I've said, is gone. We still felt that that was really important. We have 294, no more, no less, uh, multiple choice questions. So that's about 12 per chapter. These are organized into quizzes for you that as teachers you can assign and which are automatically marked for the students. And then, as I mentioned, I spent a long time preparing both answers and then more detailed work solutions. A lot of those align perfectly with the original IB past paper question. And all of this is included. Um, I don't know too much, if I'm honest, about the mechanics of how all the different textbook companies work and how it works for the authors. But Chris and I certainly really like the fact that we don't need additional packages or more subscriptions to to be able to do all of this in our classrooms. And then uh, drawing things nearly to an end, we just wanted to let you know too that we've prepared some sample lesson plans for you um, for the wave phenomena chapter. This is the chapter that's been released early for you to have a look at and see whether you like the look of the book. We've done five lessons to cover this C.3, so water waves, light refractive index and Snell's law, single slit diffraction and modulation, double slit interference, and then multiple slits and diffraction grating interference. We've uh, discussed in those lesson plans what it looks like to teach a mixed SL HL set, who should be there for which sections. And within those lesson plans, we have sections on context, the understandings, misconceptions. That's something I remember digging into a lot when I was training to teach. Do I care about, do I sort of give as much attention to those today when I plan lessons? Probably not enough. And then an actual plan of what the students will do to acquire their knowledge, understanding and skills, as well as activities, experiments, problems, 
links to IB concepts, key questions, and additional resources. Okay, um, I can't quite remember why I put in this uh, this opening. I guess it was just to exemplify what it looks like when you start a theme in the book. Oh yes, and this is, um, I guess, also to draw your attention to the fact that even when you're studying individual topics, it's worth at the end coming back to the overall theme page so that students can see where that topic lies relative to the rest of the content that surrounds it. And then finally, um, I've been a TOK teacher um, in the past couple of years. So I've actually included in the book a guide to how students can relate their TOK exhibition and their essay to physics. And I've uh, provided quite a detailed walkthrough, I think, for both of those things. The thought process that a student might go to, how it is they might select the objects for their exhibition. Um, so I think that TOK teachers should read this book too. Um, we have an in-book guide to the extended essay as well. It's possible for you to sign up to a free digital trial of all of this. As I've mentioned, uh, Pearson are producing standard level and higher level books. The higher level one is the great catch all because everything that's higher level is highlighted. And then we are also, Chris and I, producing blog posts in collaboration with Pearson. And we have made a video um, in which we have addressed some of the most frequently asked questions that have come through already. Um, I think Ken and the team at Pearson are going to contact everyone who's registered for this webinar quite soon after the call. Get a reminder. And uh, for those who are really eager to get stuck in and start preparing for next year, the higher level book and the associated active book online will be available from the 17th of April, so about 17 days time, and the standard level book from the 28th of April. And I think, Ken, that's everything that we wanted to present on. Let's get into the fun part, the Q&A. All right, thank you so much, Emma and Chris, for such an informative session. So again, uh, just a quick reminder for everyone who's on the call, if you have any questions at all, whether it's regarding the resources or regarding the syllabus or anything about IB if, if physics at all, do pop in your questions in the chat box or via the Q&A function. All right, so I have uh, three questions with me, so I'm just going to go through them very quickly here. Uh, so the first questions come from the teacher that's asking, is there a weekly lesson plan that's included in the teacher's book or in the uh, book that you have just presented? So we don't have a lesson plan for every single chapter, but I think because we haven't really held back in providing students with information in the book, it would be quite straightforward, I think, for a teacher to really feel quite well prepared um, purely from reading what we have in the book as it stands. And as I say, I think the fact that we've included like the global context, the key facts, the sort of misconceptions means that the teacher doesn't have to kind of come up with those things on the spur of the moment. So there aren't lesson plans for the full course, but uh, we think the book like would, would enable someone to feel very well prepared even without them. Thanks so much, Emma. Uh, so just in case if uh, anyone on the call, you wish to ask questions directly rather than uh, writing your questions in the chat box, you can also use the raise hand function and I will enable you to switch on your microphone so that you can ask questions. All right, second question here is, uh, how much difference between the print and the ebook version? Should we use both or can it be used independently of each other? Great. Um, I believe, and Ken, maybe you can help me out with this one, that 100% of the physical copy book will find its way onto the ebook. And equally, though, 100% of the ebook extra content is available to people who purchase the physical book. So you really can't go wrong. I think it's a little bit more expensive to buy the physical book, but then your students have it in their hands. Um, I don't think we distinguish the, between the content that's available to someone who purchases one or the other. Yep, that's exactly right, uh, Emma. So uh, for anyone <laughs> that's purchasing, there's really not no difference. You can use either one, uh, either the digital subscription or the print book itself. Okay, so there are several questions that come in from the chat box. So I'm just going to ask a question from Thomas. 
So Thomas asking, am I to understand that the higher level book can be used as a book for combined level classes or are you producing a separate combined class book? So the higher level book is the one that I will probably purchase for all physicists at my school. Um, this is because it's got 100% of the higher level content. Obviously, all higher level students need to know 100% of the standard level content as well. But I think it does a really nice job of allowing standard level students to see like a little bit extra. What would a little bit more in this topic look like? You know, standard level students aren't necessarily uncurious about the rest of physics. It's just they have other priorities in their curriculum. So I, I, I'm sorry, Ken, maybe this is the wrong answer, but I think the combined book is the right one for, for, for my classes. It's the one that I would go for. Chris, do you want to come in on that? Because um, Chris, for people who don't know, always teaches uh, a lot of kind of combined classes and he has quite a unique style in the classroom. Yeah, I would go for the, for the high level book, yes. Um, quite often, actually, a standard level student is a bit stuck when it comes to doing the internal assessment because they don't do quite enough to, to be able to do, do a, uh, anything, anything with it. An example in the last curriculum was the uh, simple harmonic motion where they didn't even have to do the equation for um, a pendulum. And then they can't really do anything. So, so uh, we often go a little bit further to just give a little bit more than, than maybe the IB requires. Um, so they, they can actually have a bit of a better understanding. Right. Thanks, Emma. And thanks, Chris. Uh, Thomas, I hope that answers your questions. Another question is from Steve. Uh, so Emma has covered this much earlier in her presentation, but it's worth uh, reiterating that once again. So Steve is asking, uh, do you have any other resources like PowerPoint or video links in the textbook? Oh, wow. It's like he's... Uh priming us to kind of summarize all the great things so yeah so the book is a standalone absolutely amazing resource um and we think it has everything you need but just in case that wasn't enough we've got like 40 videos all fully explained about 40 FET simulations fully explained We've got 17 additional labs in addition to the sort of probably 17 that have found their way into the book itself. Um, and all of the, you know, about 300 multiple choice questions, which are automatically marked and explained as well. Great. I hope that uh, give everyone quite a bit <laughs> of uh, either as to what the resources that's available with the book itself. Uh, another question is from Kiera, if I pronounce your name correctly. Do you have quick practice questions for long section B paper two? Uh, yeah. So yeah. we, yeah, oh, sorry, yeah, got it. So the just to kind of remind everyone or, or to tell everyone, the three, or sorry, the two exam papers in the new guide are paper one, which is around half multiple choice questions on the full course, half data analysis. And then paper two is, a, is kind of like the current paper two. It's long answer questions for the full course. So we have been, we've included uh, multiple choice questions and long answer questions throughout the book for all of the topic content. But in the ebook, that's where you'll find the practice questions on data analysis. We do also have some data analysis, of course, included throughout the, the book as well. Um, but just to let people know, your students will be really well prepared. And we've also even like signposted in the book. Oh, 20 mark questions. Yes, yeah, some of them are 25, actually. Um, and uh, we've got some of the Olympiad ones are like 10 questions in or 10 marks in one go as well. So yeah, thank you for interjecting. Yeah, some of them are, I think, quite a few go up to 25 marks. Um, but the one thing we have done though is, um, I guess we did want to make sure that the book was achievable, like that students could answer all of the questions for a chapter without having had to study like everything else in the book first. So um, in some places we've split some of the IB past paper questions into two halves, like one for one topic and one for another. So we've prioritized learning, I would say, over um, kind of just giving you like 20 mark questions throughout. 
Right, great. Thanks, Emma. Uh, there's a question to come in from the Q&A. So the teacher is asking uh, for Emma, can we invite you to our school to conduct knowledge sharing session to our other teachers, either virtually or in person? <laughs> so I guess that depends oh, where the location <laughs> is. <laughs> of course. Yeah, um, I, I'm always keen to travel. I suppose it does depend where, um, but you know, for the price of a flight, I'm there, unless you're in Norway, in which case I'll get in the car. Um, I'm sure Chris likes to travel too. And actually, Chris's availability will probably increase <laughs> quite a lot when he retires. <laughs> um, but we're a good double act, as you can see. Great, thanks. I, I think the teachers really appreciate uh, this knowledge sharing session. And uh, if we are organizing any other sessions in the future, we'll be sure to invite everyone once again uh, to come for this uh, session. So just another question in the chat uh, from this teacher that uh, does the book contain suggestions for CAS or CAS? Oh, for CAS? Um, not, I wouldn't say too directly, um, but we, what we have done, and I, I think this is actually, well, I think it's great because obviously I put it together, um, but what we have done that I think is really cool is we've got the section where we take the approaches to learning and we've really bottom lined like what each of those things look like for a physicist. And we've taken the entirety of the learner profile and we've written maybe four or five lines for each of the 10 characteristics about what a physicist can do to be more knowledgeable or caring or balanced, for example. Um, and I would say that you would struggle to read the book and not pick up on some of Chris's personality and therefore become a more well-rounded, kind of curious, creative, active and service-minded person. Um, we've also included a few quite honest remarks about how, for example, Paul might stand in the way of maybe renewable energy development. Um, but equally, this is kind of where the TOK comes in too. We've written, oh yeah, this is so good actually. I'm I'm glad this person's made me think of this. In the TOK chapter, we've gone through all of the optional themes, technology, language, religion, um, and politics. And we've um, and indigenous societies, and we've written sections about how physics relates to each of these, how physics has been enabled by, but also slowed by, by each of these things, and, and how each of those things has been enabled by and slowed by physics. So honestly, I, I really like it. And um, Chris can maybe talk more about how he's infused the book with his personality. Hmm. Well, the front covers are very, very uh, cast related. Uh, one is one is of some para sport, and the other one is surfing. So uh, yeah, I had something to do with the choice of those uh, covers. Thanks, Emma. Thanks, Chris. Definitely, we can see some of your personalities coming through via the covers. And <laughs> I, I think that that's all the questions that we have. Oh no, uh, Thomas just sent in another questions here. Uh, so let me just read the question from Thomas. Does your book include instructions to the renew IB command terms in physics? Great. Um, you know what? I actually have to confess that I've slightly forgotten. I, I would need to remind myself of the external assessment chapter. Um, I wonder, Ken, if you can like hold the floor for 30 seconds while I just check. Is that okay? Sure, sure. Not a problem at all. So while we're waiting for that, I'm just going to uh, run through some announcement. So uh, today's session is focusing on diploma physics. We will also be organizing similar sessions for biology and chemistry teachers with our authors in the coming week, uh, most definitely after the Easter uh, holidays. So do sign up for our newsletter or follow our social media so you can join us when it is announced. So there are a lot of uh, questions from the attendees about how do they get a digital sample as well. So you can also request for a sample book for our digital copies in our website. So I will put in the link uh, for the digital trial in the chat box so you can request for it. So there's a 60 day trials account that you can uh, access for the digital trial. And for those who are asking for the recording, so of, of course this session is being recorded and it will be available at our website as well. So you can still access and view it again at your convenience. I will put in the chat in the chat box so you can also access the recording at any time. Right, um, Emma, back to you. Great. Uh, so I have done a check and we don't, I believe, have a section where we list all of the command terms and say how to do them. But we do have a 
paragraph in the exam section on the importance of reading the command term carefully and getting familiar with what each one means. The other thing is because we have got this amazing amount of permission with the IB and this amount of collaboration, um, I would say something like 60% of the questions in the book are from past papers. So the students would be able to, you know, if you were looking for a question that requires a, a suggestion or an explanation, you could quite easily, I think, um, either do a search of the ebook or have your students go through and, you know, find questions that have that particular command term when they're doing their exam preparation. So, um, definitely not impossible that they'll get good at it. Um, and then you can go to the work solutions to see in detail why it was that the response was required in a certain way. Thanks, Emma. A uh, very quick question from uh, teacher Kiera. So is paper two standard level word 50 or 55 mark? Great question. I'm on the ebook as we speak, so I'm just going to have a little look at the, <laughs> at the number of marks. So Ken, could you repeat the paper and the, the level? Yeah, paper two standard level, what 50 or 55 marks? 55 marks and it's worth 44% of the course and it is one hour and 30 minutes. Short answer and extended response questions. As opposed to paper one at standard level, which has a total of 45 marks um, with 25 going to multiple choice questions and 20 going to the data analysis questions. At higher level, the percentages are like distribution are largely the same. There, there are 40 multiple choice questions. There are 20 marks worth of data analysis and 90 marks worth in paper two. Right, great. Interesting so that much. there are 50 in the specimen paper because uh, yeah, that's, Interesting, something we'll need to check. We can wrestle with that on the DP Facebook group if you're there. <laughs> right, great. And uh, that concludes the session for today. Thank you so much, Emma, and thank you so much, Chris, for joining us this morning. We hope everyone that have uh, sit in today's session find it informative and find it useful for your preparation for teaching the new IBDP physics in the coming year. So with that, we're going to end the session. If you have any questions at all, or do you would like to ask for the questions to Emma and Chris, do send us an email uh, to either your account managers or to our Pearson International School's uh, Facebook page or on our email address. Okay, And we will reach back out to you when we can. So thank you once again to everyone. We hope that you have a great rest of the day and stay safe, stay well wherever you are. Have a great weekend ahead. Bye bye, everyone. Bye everyone, thank you. Bye.